In this video we are going to learn error handling. Error handling mechanism helps us to handle the errors and gracefully process it. The method level errors can be handled using try, catch and the finally block. Now let us learn how to handle error in ASP.NET and how to handle multiple types of error as well. So in this how to we are going to cover two things. How to ha handle any error or how to handle multiple types of error as well. So in order to do that first let us mm, create one label control where we are going to write our error that will occur in my page. So this is my label control and here is my page load event of the code behind. So you can see that this is my page load event. Yes. So here is my uh, page load event. Now before I proceed uh, what, what I will do is that I will just comment this much of code the try catch only okay and now here we, what we will do is that we will add something like var result is equal to i divided by j and then we will write response dot write result now you can see that is that you cannot divide any number with the zero now, but here what we are trying to do is that we are going to divide i that is 5 with the zero now naturally this should throw error and here because we are not uh, using any uh, error handling mechanism so it will simply display on the page let us see this so let me just run this page now when I run this page you will see that I am getting error this error is system dot divide by zero exception attempted to divide by zero this is clearly showing me that you cannot divide by zero to any number now if if in the real time application the end user will get this kind of error it's very dangerous because it is giving the whole source code as well as it is not looking good you know it is not graceful error you are not providing any any, any message to the user that what happened wrong and what to do next so this is not good so that's where the error handling handling mechanism comes into the picture so now let us learn the error handling mechanism now in the error hand in order to use the error handling mechanism we need to use the try catch and the finally block so here what i have done is that i have kept one label control on my page so asp label id equal to lbl message runner equal to server and then naturally we are not going to use view state so I am writing enable view state equal to false now here what we need to do is that whatever code that we feel that can throw error we need to keep that particular code inside the try block now this error handling can be done using try and catch block there is finally also we will discuss about that later on so the idea here is that whatever code that you think may throw error should be kept inside the try block so here what I feel is that might be the i oblique j can throw error because someone may try to divide any number by zero that's why I have kept that particular uh, code inside the try block and then I am simply writing the uh, result here now he here because this is naturally uh, a error prone code that will throw error and my expectation is that it may throw divide by zero exception so first in the catch block we have used divide by zero exceptions and then we have written one very simple error saying that sorry divide by zero is not possible and then we are uh, you know if you want we can write something the actual error also or you can simply write the message so, dot message so what it will do is that if the divide by zero exception will occur it means that if user will try to uh, input data that will come in the scenario where uh, he is trying to divide any number by zero then it will come into this particular block and if divide by zero has not occurred any error has occurred because of some other kind of problem then it will come into this catch blocks so the, the try catch this try and catch block can be used to handle the error in, in, in the pages and you can use multiple 
catch with the try you cannot use more uh, more than one try but you, in a single try catch block you can use one try but multiple catches so that for example here you can use divide by a zero exception here you can you can catch some other kind of exception then you can catch some other kind of exception like that now here because i have used divide by zero exception so now let us let, uh, run this page and see that what is going to happen here now when i will run this page you will see that I am getting errors. Sorry, divide by zero is not possible. Attempted to divide by zero. Now this particular error message, attempted to divide by zero, is coming because of this e dot message. Now if I will add e dot to a string, then I will get the complete error that has occurred. You can see that it is giving me the complete error with all the code snippet and uh, at what co line of code the error has occurred. So this much of thing is not in. Uh, good for the user but for the developer so in, in generally we should provide the message to the user if not then we can sim simply write our own custom message and send to display to the user so here i have shown that how to write your custom message and how to write the message that actually will be thrown by the asp.net as well now because i have tried to divide by zero so i am getting this error and because is cached into this uh, cache block so I, i'm getting here now let us put 5 and j is equal to 1 this is naturally possible you can divide 5 by 1 so when i will run this page you will notice that no error will come and the result will result will be written into the label control so if no error will come then naturally try block will execute and it will not come into the catch block but if any error will occur then try inside the try block then whatever catch block have been specified it will go into that series and it will fire if, if divide by zero exception has not occurred then it will actually come to this exception block because exception is the parent class from which all kinds of asp.net exceptions are inherited now you can see that there are many types of uh, exception classes you can say access violation exception aggregate exception app domain un unloaded exception and so on so you should all you should use these kind of exceptions like i have used here divide by zero exceptions based on the scenario you have if you think that you will get a uh, uh, execution engine exception then naturally you should keep execution engine exception here if you think that you can get some other kind of exception for example uh, hold on uh, out of memory exceptions or object disposed exception or null reference exception then you can naturally uh, catch that kind of exceptions here and ultimately if you think that uh, all possible exceptions you can't think of then you can simply catch the parent exceptions and throw the error so this is the way to gracefully catch the error that may occur in your code and uh, gracefully uh, show a masses or gracefully uh, handle the error now now the general best practices uh, using the try catch block is that you should not keep all the code of your method inside of the try try block you should only put that much of code that you think may throw error so that's why here I have just kept this much of code. I have not kept all the decreation and everything inside it. This is the, just a sample, but based on that you can uh, you, you can assume the scenario in your real time application. So the code that you think that can throw error should be only kept in inside the try block. Otherwise, all codes you can keep outside the try block.